Hello, and welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. I'm Krista Tweed, an Applications Engineer with HBM, and in this video I'm going to provide an overview of how to configure the Perception display. The Perception display object allows the user to view waveform data. By waveform, I mean amplitude versus time, as shown in this example. Waveforms can be analog or digital inputs, or waveform results from either the real-time formula database or the formula database. A display has panes and traces. This example display has six panes, each with one trace displayed. You can also overlay multiple traces in a single pane. A display can have multiple pages, all of which share the same x-axis or time scale. If the user zooms in on an area of interest on one page, the time scale of all the other pages in the display follow suit. Perception can auto-configure a display as it connects to Gen Series hardware. That means Perception determines how many channels are active in the mainframe and automatically creates a display to show all of those channels. The default configuration is eight panes per page and one trace per pane, but the user can change that default if they wish. The user can completely customize the perception display, set font size, number of pages, colors, grid settings, what is displayed on the y-axis, the display behavior during data acquisition, everything is adjustable. Perception doesn't place limits on the number of displays in a virtual workbench, number of panes per display page, or the number of traces per pane. The user decides, and those decisions are typically driven by the resolution of the monitor on the Perception PC. When a user first starts Perception, the software may display the startup dialog shown here, which asks them what they want to do. If the second option is selected, set up an auto-configured experiment, Perception will connect to the mainframe and auto-configure the display. If the reset hardware box is checked, as shown here, all settings in the mainframe are returned to the factory default settings. Perception connects to the mainframe and puts the system in preview pause mode. Since I was running in the continuous acquisition mode, Perception created both a display and meters in the active sheet. I see a split display with the live data in the right half of the display and saved data in the left half of the display. Since I am running in preview pause mode, data is not being recorded, and thus the left half of the display remains blank. My mainframe has two modules, each with six channels. You can see channels A1 to A6 and channels B1 and B2 on page 1 and channels B3 to B6 on page 2. The digital inputs or event channels for both recorder A and B are displayed in the lower two panes of page 2. The meter section also has two pages since there are more than eight channels in the mainframe. The first eight channels are displayed on page 1 and the remaining analog channels are displayed on page 2. As I have said several times, the user can configure each display to meet their needs. To open the Display Setup dialog, click on the Display Setup icon in the toolbar that is shown here, or right-click in the display and choose Display Setup. The first tab allows you to set the display name and decide whether the name is shown in the title bar. You decide what is displayed in the control area at the bottom of the dialog and set the size of the icons in that area. You can add and remove pages and give each page a name. The zoom style and display behavior during acquisition are also set in this tab. The second tab, Annotation and Grid, controls those features of the display. You decide what information you want displayed on the X and Y axes and the size of the Y annotation area. You decide if a grid is displayed and how many divisions you want in the grid. Colors, annotation font, and the pane separator and event traces sizes are also set here. The third tab, Pane Setup, controls the number of panes on each page and which traces are in each pane. 
you expand the data sources to select the trace of interest. The final tab, Traces Setup, determines the properties of the traces, which data source is displayed in the pane and what Y scaling is used for that trace. The default Y scaling is the amplifier range of the channel. The user can change the default range for that trace to a different fixed range or choose to have that trace's scale follow another trace on the same page. This can be useful if you have multiple channels measuring similar signals, maybe three phases of voltage. You can choose to have the scaling of the traces for phases B and C follow the scaling of phase A. The position of the trace in the pane can be adjusted on this tab to shift a trace up or down. This is sometimes useful when comparing two similar traces that are overlaid in the pane. Finally, a zero line can be displayed with a trace and the color of the trace can be changed. If you want to make minor changes to an existing display, the drag and drop approach is often the easiest. Let's say I want to change my perception display to show all the channels from recorder A overlaid in one pane and the channels from recorder B overlaid in another pane. To do that, I click and drag each of the A channels in my display and drop them into pane one. Perception deletes that pane the traces were in since it is now empty and adds them to pane one. I have to increase the size of pane one to be able to see the names of all the channels in the Y annotation area. I can add B2 to the same pane as B1. Since channels B3 and B6 are not shown on this page, I will locate those channels in the data sources navigator. I hold my mouse over the tab and pin it open. I expand the data source in group one and recorder B so I see channels B3 to B6. I select all four channels by clicking on B3 and then holding the shift key on the keyboard while I click on B6. This selects all channels. I can then drag them and drop them into the pane containing the traces for B1 and B2. If I decided I wanted three panes rather than two, I can click on channel A1 and drag and drop it onto the pane divider. This creates a new pane for that channel. Perception also allows you to create additional sheets and displays within your virtual workbench. In this example, I create a new sheet by right-clicking to the right of the final sheet in my workbench and selecting New User Sheet. A blank sheet is created. I want this sheet to have four unique areas, so I right-click and select Sheet Layout, Quad, and Cross. I am going to drag and drop data sources into each area to create the areas I want. I browse to channels A1 to A3 and drag and drop them into the left upper area of the sheet. The icon for those data sources shows me those are waveforms, so Perception automatically creates a display. Now I expand each channel to see the stat stream parameters. I select the max of each channel using control click and then drag and drop them into the upper right area. Perception creates a meter object because those data sources are parameters. Now I repeat this process with channels B1 to B3 to create a display and meter area for those channels. I can adjust the size of the four areas as needed. I can also give the sheet a unique name to remind me what signals I put in that sheet. The reason for creating two displays in the same sheet would be so that each display can have a unique time scale. In summary, we've seen that Perception's display object is completely user configurable. The auto configure option is the easiest way to create a display for all active channels in a mainframe. The display can then be changed using the display setup dialog or by dragging and dropping data sources into a display. 
There is no limit to the number of displays that can be created in a virtual workbench and the number of pages, panes, and traces in each display. Thanks for watching. If you have questions on Perception or any other HBM product, please feel free to contact technical support via phone, email, or the HBM website.